Good morning everyone. This is Pavani. Today I would like to take for 10th standard the never never nest. It is an interesting lesson. So let us see. And before going to the lesson, what are the characters here? Jack and Jill, both husband and wife. Okay, Jack and Jill, both husband and wife. And here one more character, Aunt Jane. Okay, Jane is the aunt. Okay, so let us see the lesson now. Yes, see, uh, the launch of Jack and Jill's villa at New Hampstead. The essential furniture consists of a table on which are writing uh, materials and two chairs. As the curtain rises, the launch is empty, but Jack and Jill come immediately, followed by Aunt Jane. So now let us see, okay, Jill. And this is the launch, okay, what Jill is speaking here. This is the launch. So what is the meaning of launch? It is a public room in a hotel or a theater or we can consider it as a sitting room. Okay, as a sitting room. Here, what is the meaning of launch? A public room in a hotel or theater or we can consider it as a sitting room. Okay, Aunt Jane, charming, charming, such a cozy little room. So what she is saying, the room was very charming, very good. Okay, such a cozy little room. So, what is the meaning of cozy? Warm and comfortable. What is the meaning of cozy here? Warm and comfortable. So, Aunt Jane, she has come to their house and she was saying that this room was very comfortable. Okay, and such pretty furniture. And by looking at their house, okay, she has seen the furniture, what they have brought. And by seeing the furniture, she said that it was very beautiful and it was very good. Then Jack, modestly, we like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. And it is very good place so that we can sit here and we can hear to the radiogram. Like that who said, Jack said to his Aunt Jane. Then Aunt Jane, oh, have you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano? Okay, you brought new house, you purchased new house and you have brought all this furniture. And also, uh, you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano like that. Who asked? Aunt Jane asked. Then Jack. Why? Of course, Aunt Jane. You simply must have a radio set nowadays. You also have in your house, no, nowadays? So we too have purchased one like that. He told her. Then Jill. And it's so nice for me when Jack away at business. So now what his wife is saying here. So when he was away at his business, when he was away from the house, uh, like that, uh, like I can listen to the radio gram. She said, I even make him move it into the kitchen so that I can listen to it while I cook. So even I move this radio gram to the kitchen so that while I'm cooking, I can listen to it. So because of that, it is very useful for us when he was away from the house, where, where else I'm alone in the house. So because of that, I can move this radio gram to my kitchen while I'm cooking. Like that who said, Jill said to Aunt Jane. Then Jack, sit down Aunt Jane, you must be tired and we have shown you everything now. So you have uh, like what visited all the rooms. Okay, now maybe you have tired. So you sit and take rest. Like that who said, Jack said to his Aunt Jane. Then Jill, what do you think of our little nest Aunt Jane? So now Jill is asking, okay, what Jill said, what do you think of our little nest? About the little nest, they were asking to Aunt Jane. Then what did she give the answer? Aunt Jane, I think it's wonderful, my dear. Yes, this little nest is very wonderful. The furniture and the car and the piano and the refrigerator and the radio, what's it? It's wonderful, really wonderful. So here, nest means what? It is their house. So what about our little nest they were asking? Okay, nest in the sense their own house. And what are the things are there in the house? The furniture is there. They have a car, they have a piano, refrigerator, radiogram, everything is there. What not? So your house is looking very wonderful. Who said? Aunt Jane said. Then Jack. And we owe it all to you. Okay. O means what? Okay. We owe it all to you. So we want to tell you everything to you. O nothing but oath means promise. Okay. We owe means we have purchased here everything. Then Aunt Jane. Yes Jack. That's what uh, what's worrying me. Okay. That is only worrying me. Why? Why did you purchase all these things? Okay. Then Jack. Worrying you, Aunt Jane? So now Jack is asking, okay, worrying you? Why it is worrying you? Then Aunt Jane, yes, that check I gave you for your wedding present, it was only 200 pounds, wasn't it? I didn't put 2000 by mistake. 
so now what aunt jane is saying so actually i have given you a check on your wedding day okay and that check how many rupees 200 pounds wasn't it but i did not put 2000 by mistake so but i didn't put 2000 i kept only 200 but i didn't keep 2000 she said why she uttered like that jill why no aunt jane uh, what on earth made you think that why you thinking like that then aunt jane well that's all right but i still don't altogether understand this house it's very lovely but doesn't it cost a great deal for rent so okay this house is very good but you don't think that is it very costly is it very expensive that it is very expensive no don't you feel like that who said aunt jane said then jack rent oh no we don't pay rent so what he said no 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 we are not paying rent auntie like that he said then aunt jane back but jack if you don't pay rent you will get turned out into the street and that would never do you will you have jill and the baby too think of now you know so now what aunt jane is saying if at all if you are not going to pay the rent definitely they will pull you out okay they will throw you out in the street so think that you have your wife and you even you are uh, having a baby also so think all that like that she said then jack no no aunt jane you misunderstood me we don't pay rent because the house is ours so now we we are not paying the rent here already we have purchased the house like that jack said then aunt jane yours already you have purchased is it yours then jill why yes you just paid 10 pounds and it's yours then what what jill is saying yes it is ours house only it is ours just we pay uh, like just pay 10 pounds and it's yours if at all if you pay 10 pounds it will be yours also like that she said then jack you see aunt jane we realize how uneconomic it is to go on paying rent year after year when you can buy and enjoy a home of your own for 10 pounds and a few quarterly payments of course why be mr tenant uh, when you can be mr owner so what they are saying to aunt jane now you also can purchase with 10 pounds okay so that uh, like how much they have to pay how much they have to pay for 10 pounds they will uh, she will, she too will get a house so what they are trying to tell her we have purchased why can't you purchase then it will be your own house oh year after year paying this rent this nonsense why why can't you buy okay why you want to be like a tenant you also can purchase your house like that they gave the suggestion then aunt jane okay i'll see she said yes there is something in that even so you must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this okay then aunt jane aunt jane told them that okay this place is very nice but okay it's uh, it must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this then jill oh he is aunt jane why only last year he had a 5 uh, shilling rise didn't you jack so now what jill is saying oh he is aunt jane why only last year he had a 5 shilling rise didn't you jack then jack what he said of course that was nothing really i am expecting 10 this christmas so he was expecting how much 10 to this christmas okay then aunt jane jack i have just thought of something that car is it yours again she was asking is that car belongs to you is that yours she asked then jill of course it's ours that car is also ours he said then aunt jane all yours then jack well no not exactly all so what he said not exactly all few things are our own okay then aunt jane how much of it then she was asking that how much the cost of that car then jill oh i should say the steering wheel and one of the tires and about two of the cylinders but don't you see that's the wonderful thing about it then aunt jane i don't see anything wonderful about it jill but there is aunt jane you see although we could never buy a car outright we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere 5 pounds down so now see here they have they did not purchase the car see here you see although we could never buy a car outright we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere 5 pounds down so we kept only 5 pounds so we got a motoring car okay for pleasure nothing but what for happiness then aunt jane 
and the rest by easy installments i suppose so 5 pounds we have kept and the remaining amount we pay through installment okay like every month emi we are going to pay like that they said then jill exactly so when aunt jane said okay for 5 pounds only how did you get that means every installment you are going to pay like that she said then immediately jill accepted yes yes true what you said is right then aunt jane exactly and what about the radio what's it and you have brought the radiogram what's it about then jack well that's the even that also they have purchased in the installment then and what about the piano again aunt jane was going on asking one by one then and the piano then jill well of course that is also we have purchased in the installment then aunt jane and the furniture and what about the furniture that is also in the installment okay jack i am afraid so aunt jane i suppose all you own the this all you own is this leg she points to one jill well no as a master of fact it's that one she points to another so now what happened so now aunt jane is getting angry that why these people have purchased like this everything in installment how can they bear all the expenses now aunt jane and the rest belongs to mr sage i suppose jill yes then aunt jane well i'm not going to sit on mr sage's part for any one she stands up so whenever they asked her to sit in a place she don't want to sit in that place so she stood up now tell me how much do all these installments come to so now tell me how much you are going to pay for all these things how much installment you are going to pay then jack will actually he takes out his pocket book and consult it actually to 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence a week so how much he has to pay 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence a week then aunt jane good heavens and how much do you earn so what about your earning okay you are earning that much to pay all the installments then jack as a matter of fact here that is 6 pounds he is earning how much amount 6 pounds but he has to pay the installment 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence a week okay a week he has to pay like that but he was earning 6 pounds only can he manage that okay that was the question now here aunt jane but that's absurd absurd means what contrary to reason okay that's absurd what is the meaning of absurd contrary to reason okay so that's really absurd who said aunt jane said then now what happened how can you pay 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence out of 6 pounds so you are getting only 6 pounds how can you pay okay then uh, whatever uh, what about your house how we are going to lead it okay how you are going to survive it like that she asked if you pay all the installments only you are getting 6 pounds but you are having about 7 so how we are going to manage it like that she asked then jack what did he answer oh that's easy you see all you have to do is to borrow the rest of the money for the payments from the uh, thrift and providence trust co uh, corporation so all the thing is what i am getting 6 pounds so remaining amount i will borrow i will borrow from where from thrift and providence trust corporation so he is going to borrow from the trust okay then jill they are only too glad to loan you any amount you lack now jill his wife what she is telling really they are very helpful auntie they will provide you lot of money whenever we keep for the loan like that she is saying on note of hand alone so just uh, we have to write on a paper and we have to give them a note then they will give us the amount like that jill was telling to aunt then aunt j and how do you uh, propose to pay that back then how you are going to pay that back okay you are saying that you are going to borrow from the trust corporation they are how much amount you want they are giving but how you are going to pay them back again okay then what what was the answer then jack oh that's easy to you just paid back in installments so now what he is saying we have purchased all so how it is very easy that we have taken from the trust no you pay to the trust in installments so that our work will complete like that he said then aunt jane installments she claps her hand to her forehead and sinks back weakly into the chair so she was doing like this okay she was clapping her head on on her forehead and she sat weakly in the armchair 
then realizes that she is sitting on Mr. Said's face and leaps to her feet again with a little shriek. Okay, then she understood that she was sitting on the Said's face and leaps. Leaps means what? To jump. To her feet again with a little shriek. Immediately again she stood up. She don't want to enjoy that luxurious life. So whatever she had with that only she is happy. What these people have done even though they don't have. Uh, okay even though they are not earning that much. He has taken lot of burden on him. And again he is borrowing from the trust corporation. That how he is going to pay means what he said. He said that you are going to pay in the installments. That again the turn has come on to home. Aunt has to pay whatever they have brought. Okay. Then. Now see here. Jack. Aunt Jane is anything uh, is anything the matter? Would you like to lie down? What happened? Suddenly why did you stood up? So will you lie down for some time? Like that he asked. Then Aunt Jane. Lie down. Do you suppose I am going to trust myself in a bed that belongs to Mr. Sage or Marks on and Spencer or somebody? No, I am going home. I don't want this kind of luxurious life. When I am unable to pay like this, I don't want all these things. And I don't want to enjoy uh, such kind of luxurious life when I don't have enough money, sufficient money with me. Like that she said and she said that I don't, I don't want to be here. I will go to my home. Then Jill. Oh, must you really go? Okay, really? Do you want to go to your house? Then Aunt Jane. I think I would better. Okay, better I'll go to my house, she said. Then Jack. I'll drive you to the station. Okay, then Auntie, I'll take you to the station. Then Aunt Jane. What? Travel in a car that has only one tire and two uh, thingamis. So, what is the meaning of thingamis? See here. Thingami means a word used in a spoken English. When the name of an object has been forgotten. So, thingami means what? A word, a word used in spoken English. When the name of an object has been forgotten. So, now, no, no, no. I don't want to travel in that car. No. Thank you. I'll take the bus. So, what she said? No, no, no. Thank you. I'll take the bus and I'll leave to my place, she said. Then, Jack. Well, of course, if you feel like that about it. Then, what Jack said? Okay, if at all, if you are not comfortable to come in a car with me, then better you go in a bus, he said. Then Aunt Jane, uh, relenting a little. Relenting means just she stopped. Now I'm sorry if I sounded rude, but really I'm shocked to find the way you're living. So while going, she said sorry to Jack. Why? Because see, we cannot uh, like what we cannot make uh, people, other people unhappy with our words. But her intention is that how they are going to pay all the installments as they are the own relatives of her. She has to say, if at all, if she don't say, how will they learn? They, they think that, okay, definitely we can pay it somehow, they will think. So, in that way, they'll become in, the, like what, they'll be in debts, okay. So, because of that only she said, and while going, she's saying that, sorry, okay. And, but really, I'm shocked to find the way you are living. I have never owe, owed a penny in my life. Owed means I have never borrowed from someone in my life, cash down. That's my motto and I want you to do the same. I'll never borrow from anyone money, okay? And I also want you to do the same. Don't borrow from anyone money. When we have enough money, then we have to purchase. Otherwise, we should not purchase. Like that, she said and she went. She opens her handbag. Now, look, here's a little check I was meaning to give you anyway. She hands it to Jill. Suppose you take it and... Pay off just one of your bills so that you can say one thing at least really belongs to you. So now what she said immediately while going, she put her hand in the handbag. Okay. And from her handbag, she opened uh, one check and she has given the check to that Jack. And she said that at least one, one thing in your house, what you have purchased either sofa or else the radiogram or else the car or else okay whatever the things which they have purchased at least one should be of your own what you have purchased so this check you use for that other things anyhow you have purchased everything in an installment at least one of your own it must be in your house so this check can be used for that purpose like that she gave it one thing should belongs to you by paying this amount that one should Whenever you feel that, okay, this is mine, you can say that, okay. Like that, you can use this amount for that. She gave the check and left the place. Then Jill, awkwardly. Awkwardly means what? Not easily managed. Uh, oh, thank you, Aunt Jane. It's very nice of you, okay. That means they were expecting that. Uh, she has to give more money. But they said thank you to her. Then Aunt Jane, 
parting her arm there now i, I must be going okay now i have to go like just she parted them and she went then jack i'll see you to the bus anyway okay i'll see you to the bus anyway he said then jill goodbye aunt jane and thanks so much for the present so now what happened uh, jill said that okay th thanks a lot auntie for your present she said and in the meanwhile jack went along with her to the bus stop okay to drop her there then aunt jane goodbye my dear she and jack go out jill looks at the check and ex and exclaims 10 pounds then she hurries to the table addresses an envelope and uh, endorses the check and slips it inside with a bill which she takes from the bag and seals the envelope then she rings the bell in a moment the nurse comes in with the baby in her arms so now see here what happened then immediately after the aunt left jack will uh, jill will come to the house okay and jill looks at the check and exclaims so she will look at the check and she sees that 10 pounds okay 10 pounds was there was written in that check so she feels very happy and then she hurries to the table she hurries to the table addresses an envelope okay she will address an envelope endorses endorses means what to support what is the meaning of endorses to support the check and slips it inside with a bill which she takes from the bag and seals the envelope so she will take one uh, bill and she puts in the envelope then she rings the bell in a moment the nurse comes in with the baby in her arms so the baby was taking being taking care by whom the nurse so she has come in then jill oh nurse i want you to run and post this for me so immediately she kept that check in one cover and also one bill along with that and she asked the nurse you give my baby to me and immediately you go out and post this and come like that she said then i will look after baby while you are gone so in the meanwhile you post and come i will look after my baby you give my baby to me and she has given the envelope cover to her then nurse certainly madam certainly ma'am sure okay sure madam definitely i will post it she stands the baby to jill she hands the baby to jill takes the letter and goes a second letter jack comes in again so now what happened in the meanwhile she took the letter envelope cover the nurse and she went out in the meanwhile jack comes okay jack will come home jack well she is gone what a tartar so what is the meaning of tartar here an irritable heart to cope with person so see how they were thinking about that lady she is trying to help them from the burden okay but they are calling as irritable lady okay tartar means an irritable person okay then what is was saying jack well she is gone what tartar still she did leave us a bit on account how much was it so every time she will be back of us only after uh, after all we have purchased all these things for that also she is back of us like that he was telling to his wife jill then jill 10 pounds so what she said she uttered 10 pounds she has given did you see the check like that she asked jack with a whistle phew that's great so what he said few means what expression of tiredness so now suddenly he was dead tired by listening to all that comments what aunt made suddenly what he said is it true 10 pounds she has given like that then we can pay off the next two months on the car with that so now what jack is saying okay the two months installment we can pay for the car he said then jill i'm afraid we can't so what she said already she has given the envelope to home she has given the envelope to the nurse to post so i am afraid we can't then jack why why ever not why we can pay two installments of car with that amount then jill you see i have already sent it off for something else so already i have posted it for something else then nurse has just gone to post it so nurse has just gone to post that then jack well that's all right who have you sent it to to whom you have sent it then then jill dr martin to whom he has sent to whom she has sent dr martin jack dr martin what on earth possesses you to do that why did you send to dr martin then jill nearly in tears there now you're going to be angry with me yes don't be angry on me okay like that she said then jack i'm not angry but why waste good money on the doctor doctors don't expect to get paid anyway doctors are not uh, going to expect to uh, that we have to pay then why did you pay to doctor then jill sobbing a little but but you don't understand jack understand what then jill 
why just one more installment and baby is really ours so the baby also they have purchased in the installments it is not their own baby see everything they were purchasing at last they have purchased the baby also okay so what he was expecting the two installments can be uh, used with that money okay but now already she has she has posted it to whom she has posted it that envelope to the doctor Ma martin okay why why because they were adopting the child already they have taken the child from the doctor so if at all if we pay this installment one more installment if we pay then the baby will be ours okay already she paid 10 pounds that means one more installment 10 pounds she has to pay then she is holding out the infant a little pathetically as we black out so now see here everything everything they have purchased at last the baby also they have purchased so our life should not be like in miserable it should not be like in difficulties when we are able to purchase anything at that time only we have to purchase but but by seeing others others have everything but i don't have anything don't compare with the people those who have compared to you those who have lot you have to compare with you the person who doesn't have the lower grade you compare with you but not the higher grade okay so god has given you at least this by seeing the lower grade okay the uh, they doesn't have that but i have everything for that you need to be happy so this lesson tells what this lesson is giving moral to us a person should not be that much greedy in purchasing all the things together and getting a lot of burden on their head that how i have to pay all these installments so with that what the person will think more and more and they'll get into depression and one day they'll commit suicide so because of that what we have to do whatever we whatever god has given to us with that we have to feel very happy i'm not telling you that you should not love the things and you should not uh, uh, purchase i'm not telling you like that you have to but when you have to purchase when you have enough money and if you feel that okay i can pay this amount in installment whether i should purchase or not you ha you should have some calculation right so after doing all the calculations whether it is able to pay whether you are able to pay or not you will get to know then only you have to so like this you should not face a problem in your life so this tells uh, like what the never never nest so because of that only they are saying it as a nest it's not the house so never never means the wish will never end for them that means always they are wishing for the one or the other in the meanwhile they don't finish one installment they were expecting the other thing so because of that the lesson name is what the never never nest so i hope everyone have understood once again go through the lesson for the clear understanding so in the next uh, like with the next uh, topic i'll come in the next class so thank you everyone thank you one and all